Did you know that 32% of Americans say they'll never drive an electric car? Top reasons include range anxiety and how long it takes to charge an electric vehicle. That's what we're talking about today. The problem with plug-in EV charging. We'll see all sides of EV charging, including the three main charging levels available today, their limits, and what causes EV batteries to catch on fire. We'll also look at wireless charging, which many consumers haven't heard of yet. So hop in and let's get going. So, you're on a road trip. You're driving down a highway with your family and your brand new EV. The sun's shining. Life is great. Well, until your EV runs out of electricity. Believe it or not, this is a real phenomenon called range anxiety. Now, cue the hours as you wait for your EV to recharge at the nearest charging station. And you have to ask yourself, why can't EV charging be quick like pumping gasoline into a combustion engine car? What if the roads you drive on every day could recharge your car while you drive? Last summer, the Indiana Department of Transportation, in partnership with Purdue University, shared plans to develop the world's first wireless charging concrete paved highway. So imagine you have to take this highway any way you commute from home to work every day. This means your daily commute is no longer a waste of time since you're charging your car while you're driving it to and from work. It's brilliant. In a way, it's almost analogous to vintage trolleys in San Francisco, except it's all wireless and it's for your personal car. A few months ago, Michigan announced they'll construct the nation's first wireless EV charging road. It'll be a one-mile stretch in Metro Detroit. So the race is on. Here's how it works. While your EV is driving on a charging road, the battery gets charged through magnetic induction by pads or coils that lie beneath the street surface. Now, it may not give you a full charge, but it would help add extra miles to your EV to hold on to it until its next complete charge. But some engineers are skeptical. They say this might work for a one mile demonstration, but it's not otherwise feasible, economically viable, or scalable. You can just imagine the high cost of overhauling all major roads in America if they were electrified. Plus, you'd have to retrofit existing EVs with an aftermarket wireless receiver, which they do not presently have. And then, we have weather as another key hurdle. For example, Michigan's winters are no joke. Just imagine how many potholes they get every year. So any wireless system under the roads will get damaged more often than not. Engineers believe this technology still requires some 5 or 10 more years of development. But actually, the idea isn't new. In Europe, the UK has been testing out charging roads that work like phone chargers. In South Korea, the city of Gummi has shuttle buses that get their energy from underground power cables. Now, there's also an Israeli startup that has lined some roads in Israel and Sweden to demonstrate the viability of the concept. And they have plans to embed highways in Germany and Italy with magnetic induction technology. At present in the U.S., most EV charging that's available involves plugging in or connecting a charger to your car. But did you know there's several startups that are developing stationary wireless charging units? Imagine just parking at an underground garage at work or at a mall. You pull up to a parking stall that has a wireless charger. As long as your car has a wireless receiver, you don't need to physically connect to a charger. You just click a button on your mobile app and the charging starts. So the idea is you'll be even easier than pumping gas at a station. But for now, we have public plug-in charging stations and your own home. So exactly how long does it take to charge an EV? Well, it depends on the type of EV charger you use. Keep in mind that each charger type has an associated set of connectors. These are designed for low or high power use for either AC or DC charging. First up is level one charging. This is when you plug directly into a standard 120 volt outlet at home. This supplies power at 1.3 kilowatts to 2.4 kilowatts. And the energy output equates to about four to six miles of range per hour. So, wait time here can be forever. An overnight charge could add 50 to 60 miles, but if your EV with 250 miles of range has an empty battery, a full charge can take two full days at 120 volts. This is why level one charging is best if you already know you don't need your car for a while and you're okay with the car being parked for several hours or days. It's also practical if you like to charge your EV at home overnight. Otherwise, you're better off choosing a faster charging level like level two. Level two charging can be at home, work, or public places, and it's up to six times faster than level one. Level two charging uses a 240 volt outlet and produces four to 18 kilowatts of power. 
This means it can give you 12 to 54 miles of range per hour of charge. But it all depends on the type of EV you have and its onboard charger. Level 2 chargers tend to be found at public places like car parks, supermarkets, or leisure centers. We're likely parked for an hour or more anyway. But if you want to fully charge your EV, Level 2 charging can take three and a half hours for an 80 mile battery and eight hours for a 200 mile battery. So it's obviously fast in Level 1 but still not as fast as pumping gas in your combustion car. Both level one and level two charging use alternating current or AC, which gets converted to direct current. This conversion is what makes level one and level two time consuming. If you want to charge faster, then the fastest charging level available right now is level three charge, also known as DC fast charging. If you're the type of person who's always on the go with lots of places to visit and people to see, DC fast charging can deliver 100 RPH or more. It outputs between 50 to 350 kilowatts of power. Depending on the type of EV you have and your car's voltage capacity, DC fast charging can charge your car up to 80% in about 20 to 30 minutes, which isn't too bad. There are three different types of DC fast charge. There's combined charging system or C CCS, this is the most common one. There's also Chedimo, which some car makers use. And then there's the Tesla Supercharger, which will only work with Tesla chargers. Although Teslas can use CCS or Chedimos if they have the adapter. But before you show up at a DC fast charging station, you should check to see if your car is a DC fast charging port in the first place. That's because not all plug-in EVs on the road today have a DC fast charging port. And many in plug-in hybrids can only charge at level one or two. Now here's the thing, everyone wants to charge their vehicle quickly, but do you know what happens if a battery charges too fast? But simply, the battery will overheat, and this will degrade the battery unit over time, making it wear out faster. The best case scenario is reduced battery capacity, but the worst case scenario is that it could catch fire or even explode. This is because lithium can start building up on the surface of the anode. This phenomenon is known as lithium plating. Once this starts to happen, the lithium deposits will form filament-like structures called dendrites. They can grow across the electrolyte touch the cathode and lead to a short circuit. This is typically what happens when a battery catches fire or explodes. But this doesn't mean you should avoid fast charging completely. All EV batteries have built-in charging speed limits set by the car's onboard charging ports. This is to ensure these problems never happen. The most powerful public charger in the U.S. right now is 350 kilowatts. That means you could technically charge an Audi e-tron SUV 95 kilowatt hour battery in about 16 minutes. But the reason you can't do that now is because the battery itself can only accept except at most 150 kilowatts of power. That's why the charging speed is closer to 40 minutes to lower the risk of battery fire and explosion. In general, once your battery is 80% full, charging speed slows down to prevent the battery from being damaged. Did you know that the EV's charging speed depends on five factors? First is the size of the battery. The larger the battery capacity, the longer it will take to charge. Second is the battery charge level. If you got an empty battery, it'll take much longer to charge than if it had been half full. That's a no-brainer, too. The third factor is the maximum charging rate of the vehicle. Each electric vehicle has a maximum charging rate set by the manufacturer. This limits the charging speed. Even if you went out of your way to go to a charging point with a higher charging rate, your EV's maximum charging rate would not change. The fourth factor is the maximum charging rate of the charging port. It's generally recommended not to charge at a charging point with a charging rate lower than that of your vehicle. The last factor, believe it or not, is the weather. The lower the temperature, the longer it takes to charge your vehicle. This is especially true when it comes to using a rapid charger. So too, the lower the temperature outside, the less efficient your EV will operate. Ever wonder how many commercial charging stations there are? Right now in the U.S., there are almost 113,600 plug-in EV charging outlets. Another problem is public charging stations aren't equally distributed throughout the United States. If you're thinking of getting an EV and you live in California, I got some news for you. As of last September, California had more than 931,000 EVs and 34,000 plugging charging ports. That's more than any other state by a huge margin. Next up is Florida. They have 109,000 EVs and less than 6,000 charging ports. Then we have New York, Washington State, and Texas. Let's say you live in North Dakota. Unfortunately, I got bad news for you. Right now, there are less than 700 EVs in the entire state of North Dakota and only 134 charging ports. In fact, it's the least EV-friendly state. Who wants to buy an EV when there are so few public charging stations? It's not just that. Consider this. Among the bottom of the EV barrel are Wyoming, South Dakota, and Alaska. One thing all these three states share is cold winters. 
Vice President Kamala Harris recently announced the government's $7.5 billion payout vision to help expand EV charging infrastructure. Their model is based on the gasoline station network. But is it realistic? Well, the thing you have to understand is that an EV charger is basically nothing like a gas station. Here's a few problems with this plan. First off, EV charging pricing is nothing like you find at a gas station. Sure, gas prices fluctuate. Pricing at charging stations can be summed up as a mystery. That's because charging prices depend on the state, the electric utility service area and the charging provider's business model. Plus, the EV charging industry hasn't even completely agreed on their payment units. Many stations assess the fees by the kilowatt hour. Some charge a flat rate and others charge by the minute. Each utility establishes its own rates, so it's not as simple as gas prices. Current charging stations have another major problem. Reliability. Early last year, Plug in America surveyed over 3,500 EV drivers. They found that 54% of the drivers had problems at public chargers. The most common problem? Broken chargers. Think that's bad? Well, if you usually pay for your gas with a swipe of a credit card, I've got even more bad news. Currently, many charging stations do not accept credit cards. And even if you're at a station that does, the process isn't user-friendly. Instead of inserting your car, you have to call an 800 number, read the card's data over the phone. California started recording requiring charging stations to accept credit card payments, but we'll have to see how long it takes for other states to follow suit. Many people believe that EV charging stations operate on a grid or by electrical utility companies, but that's a myth. Yes, it's possible for a grid or utility company to operate charging stations, but some automakers actually operate their own network of charging stations. There's also a number of third-party charging station network operators that are independent of electric utility companies or even EV original equipment manufacturers. But now, you tell me, have you ever had bad experience with EV charging? Do you think charging stations will ever be like gas stations? Please share by commenting below. If you liked the episode, please like and subscribe. Thanks for your support.